Hello, good morning to all of you. So uh, let's uh, start today's lecture uh, of computational chemistry. So until now we have discussed uh, that uh, basic computational chemistry and what are the properties uh, we can compute and we have also discussed one uh, of the central concept that is the potential energy surface and how potential energy surface are uh, related to the thermo thermodynamics, uh, kinetics and uh, the distributions of the product okay so means that if you know the potential energy surface or if you can compute the potential energy surface then you can actually compute many thermodynamic properties you can actually determine that which one will be the major product which one will be the uh, kinetically controlled product and so many and so many things okay so in the next uh, what we actually have to understand that what are the basic principles or fundamental principles uh, are actually behind exist behind this computation okay so that was actually our second question if you remember in the introductory class that we have asked a question that what are the fundamental principle behind this computation okay so uh, you can see this plots and you uh, remember these plots because these uh, already I have discussed once in uh, your quantum chemistry class that uh, this is the plot of velocity versus mass and if we have the we have particles like small mass and small velocities uh, velocity and mass both are small then we can use so we actually need to use Schrodinger equations but if the mass is higher uh, and still velocity is lower we can use the Newtonian mechanics and if both the cases if uh, there is velocity is very high then what we have to do we have to incorporate the relativistic effect and uh, in quantum chemistry you need to incorporate you need to consider the Dirac equations whereas in classical uh, you can use the Einstein equations okay so basically uh, in computational quantum chemistry what we use we use Schrodinger equations but you uh, already know that Schrodinger equations has lots of uh, uh, lots of limitations now drawback I can say that limitations that it cannot be solved for multi electron systems and it is also uh, a very expensive computational expensive to solve okay so sometimes what we do we can take a crude approximations and we can uh, use our fundamental Newtonian mechanics to the uh, small particles also so that is actually we said that that is the field of molecular mechanics okay so let's uh, today discuss about the molecular mechanics and how it can help your calculations to determine the potential energy surface and other things okay so molecular mechanics is based on a mathematical model of molecule so it's basically uh, coming from classical idea it's not from quantum idea okay and where we actually uh, determine we actually say defines the molecules by uh, as a collection of ball and spring okay ball means your atoms and bond means the spring okay so you can see here we have uh, given here two image one is actually your uh, uh, exact image of the molecule and here is the molecular mechanics model that ball and spring okay <laughs> now the energy uh, molecular mechanics actually uses a conceptually mechanical model to express the energy of a molecule as a function of the its resistance towards stretching bond bending and bond atom crowding okay so uh, what we how we can express its energy that uh, we can assume that the reference energy uh, or zero energy is that when this molecule is in completely relaxed state means they are uh, all bond length bond angle and all the parameters are in equilibrium okay and when you want to distort that molecules it will uh, definitely gain energy and this energy is expressed as uh, from as the uh, with respect to that reference energy okay and also the uh, drawback uh, of these calculations uh, is that it uh, does not actually uh, uh, consider electrons or any type of wave functions or electron density so it cannot explain the properties like charge distributions or nucleophilic and electrophilic behavior okay so uh, 
what is actually force field so molecular mechanics is also called force field method uh, these are all synonyms so molecular mechanics methods are called force field why because this term coming from that that the negative of the first derivative of the potential energy of a particle with respect to displacement along some directions that is minus dv by dx is actually called the force okay so a force field can be differentiated to give the force on each atom okay so uh, next is that the concept of bond in molecular mechanics okay so uh, bond is also useful here because uh, we only have the connections between two balls that is by bond okay and in electronic structure calculations uh, if you uh, see that uh, later you will see that uh, the bond uh, the information of bond is not useful there so in molecular mechanics uh, a molecule can be defined by the atoms and the bonds actually by springs holding the atoms together so usually bonds are placed where the rules uh, for drawing structural formulas require them and to do a mm calculation specifying each bond a single double actually defines just that how strong it is so like if you have a single bond it is uh, will uh, it will not so strong but if it is double bond then it will be stronger than single bond okay so in an electronic structure calculations actually molecule uh, defined by that you will see in later only by their relative uh, positions of the atomic nuclei and the charges and the multiplicity suppose you want to define a water molecule so only you need the coordinates of three uh, nucleus that is one is water another is oxygen uh, uh, sorry one is uh, oxygen and another two is hydrogen okay so their relative positions and the multiplicity one because there is no unpaired electron so if you provide that information so electron structure program will find out that that is the water but in case of molecular mechanics what you have to do you have to define define the bond that which bond clearly to uh, explain the uh, to understand the water molecule in the program okay so there uh, is no mention in the bonds in the uh, electronic structure theory although we are always interested to extract the useful in concept from the nucleus and electrons about the bonds okay so uh, this can be done by calculating electron density and associating a bond with for example a path along which the electron density is concentrated but there is no unique definition of a bond in electronic structure theory mm actually is most widely useful method for computing geometries and energies because uh, for large and large biomolecules why because this is very fast calculation okay so uh, you can use these calculations for to uh, get the energy of like protein nucleic acids so more than uh, 100 atoms more than 1000 atoms like molecule and it is very useful for biomolecules and for that in 2023 uh, Nobel Prize was awarded uh, to the developer of this uh, molecular mechanics methods to Martin Karplas, Michael Levitt and Eddie Wurzel who actually uh, used the application, who applied the molecular mechanics to large biomolecules to, to characterize it, to compute their properties, okay. So next is how we can develop the force field, means how we can express the energy of the molecule using molecular mechanics method so as you know that already the molecules are expressed as a ball uh, that is atoms and spring that is bond so ball spring method okay and here uh, we again uh, told you that uh, molecular mechanics method use chemical uh, standard state as zero energy that is the strainless molecule or all the bonds and uh, angles are in equilibrium position but so other uh, molecular mechanics methods the zero energy uh, can be arbitrary whatever they choose okay so now uh, how we can express the energy of the uh, molecule in uh, molecular mechanics methods that we can make a some a collection of terms that is uh, coming from uh, different contributions that is e is equal to we can write summation of bonds is stretch plus summation of angles E bent, plus summation of uh, dihedrals E torsion, summation of pairs E non bonds, okay. 
so here you can uh, see that in uh, when it uh, this bond uh, molecules are completely in relaxed state then this energy is zero if we assume then if you consider this is a bond and then when they are stretching that uh, molecules will gain the energy and this ca will come in this contributions here also this bond angle if it's equilibrium that's zero but it can bend or it can uh, go uh, outside then also it will gain the energy and this is coming from these contributions if the molecules are actually uh, moving the dietal angle rotations takes place then we will get the energy due to torsion and if there is an electrostatic or non-bonding means that van der Waals interactions are possible uh, between the atoms which are not uh, actually connected by bond then these contributions will come as E non-bonded okay so these are all uh, <coughs> things and the summation is actually giving that it is count, will count that uh, stretching of all the bonds and also angles is, uh, uh, will count uh, bending of all the bond uh, all the bond angles like this this can be a angle this can be angle this can be angle like that so in this way we can define the energy of the molecules from its equilibrium position using this expression okay so uh, we'll uh, explicitly will uh, explain uh, that this term what is the actual expression of this uh, stretching term bending term torsion term in our next lecture so uh, thank you for now